The Forbes 30 Under 30 is the ultimate list of young entrepreneurs, innovators, and change makers who are building the future of society and business. 10 years ago, Forbes Magazine created this exclusive list to recognize emerging talent and connect with millennials and Gen Z. Today, alumni of the Forbes 30 Under 30 list have done some pretty incredible things. Everything from starting companies like Spotify, winning the Nobel Prize, and directing Hollywood films. I am so grateful for being selected to the Forbes 30 Under 30 class for 2020. And over the last year or so, I've met some incredible people all over the world who are really defining their industries. Now, one of the most common questions that people ask me is how do you actually make the Forbes 30 Under 30 list? And in this video, I'm going to share with you what the Forbes 30 Under 30 list is all about, the perks of being named to a Forbes 30 Under 30, and then I'm going to share a step-by-step -step guide of how you actually get named to Forbes 30 Under 30. At the end of the video, I'm going to share some behind-the-scenes tips if you want to get on the list. So if you think you have what it takes, or maybe you know someone who should be on this list, make sure you share this video with them. Make sure you watch it until the very end. If you guys are new here, what's up? I'm Ferris, a Forbes 30 Under 30 alumni. Man, it just sounds so cool to say that. And a few years ago, I started an app called My Swim Pro that was named App of the Year by Apple, and the app has over 1.5 million downloads. And here on the channel, I share a behind the scenes look of what it's like building a global technology and media company, taking you behind the scenes at our annual team retreat, fundraising, operations, and everything it takes to build a startup. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's go ahead and dive right in. First off, what is the Forbes 30 Under 30? It's basically a list that is the creme de la creme of young entrepreneurs who are creating real change and impact in society. Now this list is similar and different to the Forbes 400 list, which is basically the list of the world's 400 richest people. And at the top of the list, you'll see Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and other wildly successful and really rich business people. Now to make the Forbes 400 list, you need to have a net worth above two or three billion dollars. It's absolutely insane. Now the Forbes 30 under 30 list is definitely still exclusive, but it's way more attainable for most people than that Forbes 400 list. There's actually 20 different categories ranging from music, finance, sports, consumer technology, which is what I was in, and there's even a category for social media influencers. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably really familiar with some of these names like MKBHD, Emma Chamberlain, Addison Rae, and of course, David Dobrik. Now, this category is newly added, so it has some controversy around it, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. So within each of these 20 different categories, you have 30 people who are selected for the Forbes 30 under 30. If you do the math on that, 20 categories, 30 individuals, that's 600 people every single year selected to the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Not only that, there's an additional list for all of Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. So I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty epic to be on this list, but you might be wondering to yourself, like who cares? What's the point and what are the perks of actually being Forbes 30 under 30? I think there's three main reasons. Reason number one, it's recognition by Forbes. It's street cred, it's clout. This is something that you can add to your LinkedIn bio, your Instagram. Speaking of which, feel free to give me a follow on social media. But when you have this added to your bio and you're in this, this cream of the crop of individuals, it gets you in the door faster. It makes introductions easier. And in business and in life, it helps you accelerate up the ladder regardless of what you're trying to do. And for that, there's obviously a benefit when it comes to business and networking. Reason number two, you're in an elite class of people in this Forbes 30 under 30. So regardless of what category you're in, guaranteed the people who are in your class are doing some outstanding things in that specific industry. And because it's your industry, this opens up, like point number one, the networking opportunities to really advance your business, your innovation, or whatever it is that you choose to pursue and take it to the next level that much faster. And reason number three, there's definitely some exclusive events. There's the Forbes 30 under 30 app. There's also different networking opportunities that are just for the Forbes 30 under 30. And there's a few other recognition and networking things that you get access to that you wouldn't have if you're not on the list. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, all right, you've sold me, how do I get on this list? I'm under the age of 30, what do I need to do? So here's a step-by-step -step guide. Every year, Forbes receives over 20,000 nominations in the United States alone, placing the odds of making the list as tougher than getting into Harvard and Stanford. Now there's more than 30 applications for every single spot. So if you do the math on that, basically a two to 3% chance of actually getting in. 
But the process is pretty straightforward. There's an online application portal and it opens every single year for each region. So you can nominate yourself or you can be nominated by someone else. I actually recommend you do both of these. Now I'll link the application information in the description of this video. And while you're down there, make sure you destroy the like button and let me know any questions that you guys have in the comments. Now keep in mind, there's normally a cutoff date around September for nominations in the United States towards the following year's list. So if it's September, we're talking about getting on the list for the following year. There's also a cutoff date for your age. So remember, this is the Forbes 30 under 30 list. So everyone in the list is either going to be a teenager or in their 20s. Now most of the people are in their mid to late 20s, but make sure you're under the age of 30 for the following year. Now sometimes a small team of founders can actually be collectively recognized rather than just one person. So this is traditionally only when you have co-founders. So that was the case for myself and Adam Oxner, one of my co-founders, both under the age of 30. I was nominated, but together we were both recognized as Forbes 30 under 30. So if you're nominating someone, you'll have to write a short 500 character statement as to why the nominee belongs on the list, as well as another 500 character statement on what motivates this nominee to be successful or make an impact. You'll also need to input the nominee's date of birth, schooling, and all their social media links. And these are all pretty important to include, and I actually think they're required. Now I can guarantee that the screeners or the editorial team at Forbes is going to Google search your name. If you make it to the next round and you look legit, they're gonna Google search you. So it's really important that your personal brand is on point. They want to confirm that you are in fact who you say you are, and they want to see the personality that you have to see if this is someone that they want to actually recognize. So if you're a ghost on social media, you got to get on that. Make sure you have at least a LinkedIn. I highly recommend a Twitter and an Instagram. All the other social medias are definitely a nice to have, but make sure you're at least on LinkedIn. And of course, if you guys are on Instagram and Twitter, make sure you give me a follow. Really appreciate it. Share a behind the scenes look of what it's like to build a global tech company. Once you've submitted the nomination and the application window closes, there's pretty much nothing else you can do, but keep building your business because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Now, if you're a potential candidate and you're actually being considered for Forbes 30 under 30 for the following year, then eight to 12 weeks later, someone from the editorial team at Forbes will actually reach out to you and request additional information to see if you're a fit. Now, I had a few email exchanges with a journalist just a few weeks into the process. So you may or may not receive this a few weeks after, but basically there's a panel of expert judges from your choos chosen industry, and they're gonna pour over a more comprehensive short list before decisions are ultimately made towards the end of the year. Then in December, the official Forbes 30 under 30 list will be announced and is typically announced on the first or second Tuesday in December. Now I remember opening up the email and seeing that I was selected to the Forbes 30 under 30 and it was nuts. I remember sitting exactly where I was, what I was doing, and remember the feeling, the emotions of excitement and thinking to myself, wow, this is an amazing accomplishment. And then my mind started, the wheels started moving thinking, okay, like what's next? How do I promote this? How do I make sure, you know, I, the world can know my excitement? And it was a really exciting day for me. And after the news came out, I was featured by Apple, Men's Health, Fox News, Cranes, and a bunch of other publications. So the PR blast is definitely a reality. And it's an amazing opportunity, and I'm so humbled by that experience. Now in this last section of the video, I wanna share three VIP tips if you're considering nominating yourself or nominating someone else, remember, share the video if you think that someone's a good fit for this. So here are my three VIP tips. Now, number one is make sure your personal branding online is on point. If you Google your name, what do you see? Does your LinkedIn pop up first or your personal website? Or maybe you've already been featured in a lot of international or national publications, because that's the best case scenario. If you have a very common name, this might be pretty difficult actually if you Google your name, but make sure you work on your social profile so that what is submitted in the nomination form actually matches up with your profile online. Tip number two, make sure you show your impact. You can do this in numbers, you can do this qualitatively, but in the application and in the nomination, make sure you show the real impact that you're having in society. Maybe this is in total revenue, in total downloads, in funds raised for your business, the number of lives that you've saved, whatever your North Star KPI is, make sure it's obvious that you're having a huge impact in your industry. And tip number three, make sure you get nominated by a Forbes 30 under 30 alum from one of the recent years. Now make sure you actually know the person that you're requesting 
for the nomination, but I definitely had this done, and I know a number of other Forbes 30 under 30 who actually reached out proactively from alums and actually got a nomination from them, and I know that definitely carries a lot of weight. Again, make sure that this person actually knows you, and if this goes back to point number one, Make sure you have the personal brand and networking so that you already have these people in your network so it's not an ass coming out of absolutely nowhere. Again, network is your net worth. And the final thing I'll say, whether you make it on the list or not, just remember at the end of the day, it is just a headline. What really matters is what you're working on. So make sure it's your passion. Make sure you're having an impact. Make that change that you hope to see in the world. And don't waste your time living someone else's life, as Steve Jobs most famously said. I wish you guys the best of luck. I love you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.